Hello and welcome to the first video of our Steps of Faith online teaching. Whether you are joining us here during the actual premiere or you're watching it at a later date, thank you for taking time out of your week to spend with us. Here's what you can expect. Pastor Lenny will join us and share for approximately 50 minutes each week uh, on different things that he's learned on how we can share our faith in the world that we live in. So without further ado, here's Pastor Lenny. Hey, we've arrived at our final segment of Steps of Faith, at least in this quarter of the year. And we're talking today about a very, very vital part of sharing our faith. An atheist was seated next to a little girl on an airplane, and he turned to her and said, do you want to talk? Flights go quicker if you strike up a conversation with your fellow passenger. The little country girl, who had just started to read her book, replied to the total stranger, Well, what would you want to talk about? Oh, I don't know, said the atheist. How about why there is no God or no heaven or hell or no life after death? as he smiled smugly. Well, okay, the little country girl said, those could be interesting topics, but let me ask you a question first. A horse, a cow, and a deer all eat the same stuff, grass. Yet a deer excretes little pellets, while a cow turns out a flat patty, and a horse produces clumps. Why do you suppose that is? The atheist, visibly surprised by the little girl's intelligence, thought about it for a moment, and then he said, I have no idea to which the little girl promptly replied, do you really feel qualified to discuss why there is no God or no heaven or hell or no life after death when you don't know crap? Well, really, today I want to share about how knowing God's word bolsters us during this pandemic that we're walking through. And it bolsters our faith. John 16, verse 33 says, I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. But take heart, In other words, be of good courage because I have overcome the world. What are the key words in this verse? The word trouble that Jesus used is very interesting. In the King James, it's translated trials and sorrows. And in the New Living Translation, it means pressure. But that, it truly means that which constricts or causes one to feel confined or without options. I think that's a pretty good description of what we're facing today. Pressured, constricted, confined, and without options. But Jesus said, be of good cheer. Take heart. Be what? It's hard enough not to be filled with anxiety, but much less to be filled with cheer? Well, let's flesh out those two words in this verse and what they really mean. Because I think by understanding what they really mean, we can be bolstered rather than burdened. The word but is the word Allah 
in Greek. It, it's a strong contrast word. How we respond to trouble can be in stark contrast to how those around us respond. We are being pressured, squeezed, confined, and left without options by the troubles that we have surrounding us in this world. But we don't have to respond like the world. We don't have to be surly about face masks, grumbling about not seeing our loved ones, or worried about our financial well-being. Why? Well, as perhaps never before in our lifetime, we have an opportunity to stand out as beacons of hope, peace, and goodness in a world gone crazy. Which leads us to how. And our second word, by being of good cheer. It's only used seven times in the New Testament. And it means to be bolstered. To radiate warm confidence from within. Doesn't that inspire us to rise above our circumstances and allow Christ's light to shine in our dark and gloomy world? As we face the troubles that have beset our world and our lives radiate confidence rather than spread pessimism, what happens? What happens? Our faith becomes real to those around us. Why? Because Jesus has overcome the world. Not just COVID-19, not just economic trouble, not just racial turmoil, not just per political turbulence, but everything we face in this world. The word overcome should lift our spirits too. It's the Greek word nakao. And guess who is named, who took their name from that word as the athletic apparel company of the past century? Nike. Nike gets its name from nakao. And it means to conquer, to prevail, to get the victory. We don't know when this will all end. The pandemic, the constraints, the unrest, the trouble. But we as believers know how it will end. It will all end because when God prevails. The way we handle the challenges of our world face that, that we face in this world gives us as Christians a chance to let our light shine without grumbling, without fear, without anxiety, without a woe is me attitude. It's a beacon. We can be a beacon of hope in our world. But if we live in the Spirit, if we truly live in the Spirit, we can take heart and live like overcomers, like God intends. People will notice and want what we have. Have you ever had anyone ask you, hey, I want what you've got? I've had that happen on several occasions, and, and I think, what are they talking about? I mean, I kind of know that they're talking about my faith, but I wonder, are they talking about my home? And so I say, what do you want? I want what you have that, that makes you so alive and filled with joy, and I get to share with them 
Jesus. It's the transforming power that God intends each of his children to live by. So, take heart, be of good cheer, because our Savior Jesus has overcome the world. A man was exploring caves by the seashore. In one of the caves, he found a canvas bag with a bunch of hardened clay balls. It was like someone had rolled up these clay balls and left them laying out in the sun to bake. They didn't look like much. As he grabbed the bag and walked along the seashore, he began to throw these clay balls as far out into the ocean as he could. He didn't think much about it until he dropped one of the clay balls on the shore in a little puddle of water. And it cracked open on a rock. And then he saw what was in the clay ball. It was a beautiful, precious stone. Excited, the man started breaking open all of the remaining clay balls, and each one contained a similar treasure. He found thousands of dollars worth of jewels in the 20 or so clay balls that he had left. And then it struck him. He'd been on the beach a long time, and he had thrown maybe 50 or 60 of these balls out into the ocean, and they were lost. Instead of thousands of, tens of thousands of more dollars in his pocket, he had just thrown it away. As followers of Jesus, he lives in our lives. But like these jewels, we must let him shine out for others to see. I want to close this final step of faith, sharing our faith with our world by reading 2 Corinthians 4, 7. We now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God, not from ourselves. Friends, let your light shine, even and especially in your attitudes, in the way you handle the difficulties in our world. God bless you. Take these tools with you to help share your faith. Thank you, Pastor Lenny, for this week's teaching. If you have any more questions about this video, about what you've just heard, if you have any more questions, please feel free to reach out to us through any of our social media connections, or you can even email info at and we'll make sure that your email gets directed to the right person.